Hello everybody, Steffi here from The Makers. Um, welcome to our part one out of three design your own landscape needle felting um, picture. And uh, it's going to be fun. I can just feel it because this is going to be so creative and filled one full of um, all your all your creative juices will be flowing like crazy because there is a lot of um, a lot of um, scope to individualize and personalize and really, really use all kinds of fibers. Maybe some things that we never even thought about. You could needle felt um, on this on on this design your own um, landscape. And I will be doing it with you along. It's hopefully going to be really interactive. So um, on in the live streams today, Tuesday, the first one is on the sixth of April, um, twenty twenty one. So please ask questions and and get um. Um, if you want to know if you can stab into this or if you can use this or whatever, just ask questions. And of course, we're restreaming this on Thursday this week, which is, um, always have to think about this one, it's two days later. So it's the 8th of April at 7 p.m. on our Facebook group, um, themakers.co.uk. So this is this is the the Facebook handle we have got at themakers.co.uk. So if you uh, are not familiar with us yet, yet then uh, go and find us. Give us the thumbs up today. We've got lots of people chatting here already. So I'm going to say a quick hello. Oh, yes. And I just I need to take down. This is no longer applicable. So just ignore that. That was from, um, from the weekend when we did do a picture. Um, um, what's it called? Well, I did an introduction to landscape picture, um, picture. So ignore that discount code. Um, that that's been and gone. But um, um, anyway, we'll still have fun, right? Let's have a look who's here today. Thank you for mentioning that. Alicia is here, of course, today. Um, so, uh, Kim is here. Hello, Kim. Um, Emma is has is having a day off today, by the way. Just just so you, that you know, Rachel is here with Daniel. Hello, both. Vampire Venom is here. Hi, at last time, at la, um, hi, or last time watching at home, a spark on site. Tomorrow, made my chick this morning and counted the cats. 32, now staring at my designers. I want to make him, but worried I'm going to mess it up. Wow, have you got 32 cats? That is absolutely, I mean, real cats, or have you needle felt to tiny little ones? I mean, if you've got 32 real cats, you are probably a one person with the most cats I've ever known. That's amazing. Sandra is here. Catherine is there. Um, Catherine has been gardening in the very cold. Um, Diane. Uh, Oh, Diane is saying I was brilliant on the festival side. Oh, thank you very much. I hope I'm going to keep it really tight like I did on, in that hour because there was so much to squeeze in. So I, I do love the chats, but I'm, I might just have to not look at them too often. Um, Donna is there. Hi, Donna. Um, lots of weird weather everywhere. Sun, we had hail and snow yesterday as well, but nothing stayed behind. Um, Ava is there. Natasha is there. Hello, Natasha. Carol, Meg. Laura um, and Jane. Hello, Jane. Um, another Diane and Diana and another Carol. Dawn, um, Patricia, AR. Hello from Ireland. AR, hello. Um, I'm sure AR is not your name, but we'll, we'll, we'll know you as that for now. Um, and uh, Jan is there and Gina is there. Brilliant. So um, as I said, Alicia will hopefully feed back any comments. We have got a uh, we've got a um, competition. Oh, so many words with ishin in it that I get confused at times. We have got a competition going today as well. So lots of comments, please. On uh, today's prize is a landscape mix. Um, so you get all these amazing shades of green, blue, and white in our. Um, landscape wool mix and the question that uh, you um, can answer uh, by popping them into the comments is tell us where's your favorite place in the world and why oh and why okay well on and why that that's been that was a creative addition from um from emma but why ever not but i also think that emma's made a slight mistake and I'm not going to tell her about it because she's Mrs. Perfect but if you spot it she says YouTube on Tuesday the 6th of April at 2 p.m but of course it's 1 p.m because it's happening right now but that's absolutely fine because we are not confused that anybody after that it doesn't matter 
So tell us, what is your favorite place in the world and why? And you can win yourself um, our landscape um, mix, which is a wool mix, of course. And um, I haven't got a bag here with me, but it's it's 80 grams stuffed with um, all these. So there's eight different colors in there, so 10 grams. Now, when you do a picture, say, for example, of this magnitude or ooh, smallitude, I knew that was going to fall down. Let's put that back up there again. I haven't got enough easels. Um, you will you, the the amount of wool that you're using is probably in total about ten to twelve grams. So you can work out that sometimes you just literally need wisps. Incidentally, this is our new poppy landscape um, picture, which you can now the poppy kit is now available to buy from our website. And um, just to give you an idea, we, well we have two other kits, but just to give you an idea what you get in one of our landscape um, kits, and I will just show you this very quickly because I'm also going to um, use the instructions in here. This is the warm landscape um, kit, so you get the instructions and in the instructions you do get a plan for the individual pictures. So if you have, um, if you want to make the poppy landscape, you get something very similar, slightly different, but similar. And look at that. Haven't we got amazing stuff? Look how they pack. It's just, I think they know me so well now that they daren't pack anything outside the rain border. I love it. Look, these are the greens um, and blues that you get in your um, uh, wool mix that you can win today plus more because there's only five colors there and um, obviously you get way more than what's in here because um, it's an 80 gram bag so there's all these interesting colors in there and then you get the instructions so what I would suggest is um, if you if you don't know yet what landscape you're doing you can do it completely freestyle it um, that's absolutely fine if you do know um, if you have a favorite landscape then um, look at it and just uh, work out where the lines are in your landscape so here in this one here the lines are currently the the top which is the top hills here and then below where the green um, fields start is def a very distinct line here where the line of the um, house sits and then below that is fields and then right in front is the poppies so that's that's sort of what I mean about the lines in the landscape so work out and it's almost like if you imagine you had a um, sort of a layered cake you want to find out which layer is in you know you're looking at the cake in that way but with a landscape you when you're looking at it from the front so you have the layers so the the furthest way, layer is the sky because that's even there behind the mountains then you've got the mountains and um, and then you've got the fields in front of it so these are the layers that you're sort of trying to work out what I um, think is a really good idea is, is to actually get a, a piece of paper and a pencil sorry I meant to keep the instructions out and say for example with the warm landscape um, picture that we've been that we have as a kit we've also got a cool landscape picture as a kit which is the one that's toppled over there there are quite a few and this is what I will show you overhead just so that you can have a quick look at that so have a look at this. So you might have your picture and you um, you break it down. So you have the sky, that's here the background. Then you might have the hill that's the furthest away. You may have another hill that's a little bit closer. And then even a third hill that's in front of the other two hills. And then you might, might have a, um, a hillside and then another, like a field or and another sort of... Um, I don't know, another um, field or hill in front of that. So you could break it down that way. And when you draw your initial picture, do put in your tree and put in where you might want to have the sheep and the grass and the fence and whatever else. Just put that in just for the, for, for the time being. But when you transfer this onto your felt, there is no point putting any details, details in because you're going to completely cover the whole of the felt. And we're using felt viscous um, felt sheets. But I will also talk about some of the other things that you can use. So let's ha um, have a little talk about um, the type of materials that you can need felt into so as I said we've got these felt sheets I have actually got three colors here which I really love for landscape pictures one is our light blue viscous um, wool mix the other one is our um, we call it apple green I'm pretty certain it's, it's almost it's a very very pale green but also a little bit blue and then um, the last one is the um, the cream 
I think we call it um, cream custard or something like that. Yeah, it's a very pale yellow. It's almost more, well, it is definitely custard color, I would say. So it's, um, these three work perfectly because it doesn't matter if a bit of the background shines through. You can use other things. You can use tweed, you could use um, cotton, uh, you can use um, hessian. So we've got to um, make sure that your hessian, hessian is a really fine um, knit, well, it's not knitted, woven, woven, that's the word, a really fine woven type of hessian. I happen to have a piece here. Let's get that. Oh dear. It's well, you can see it here. It's clipped onto the desk, but it is it is definitely um, suitable for needle felting onto. If you're using a nice um, felt sheet like these, then it doesn't matter if, if the background shines through. It can become part of the whole um, picture. So if you, for example, if you look at this one, the cool landscape um, has got that um, slightly sort of minty green or apple green, as we call it. And and actually, the, it's shining through and it forms part of the whole um, setup. So um, the other things you can needle felt onto are... Um, well, actually, what, what works really well is our structural core felt. So the, the it's really dark and brown, so you probably need a bit more wool if you want to make a really light um, feel to it. But you can definitely use the... Um, um, the darker, the, this darker um, st structural core. You could even needle felt onto our uh, brand new 20 by 20 centimeter um, eco wool mats. They, they would make a perfect background if you just used one and you can um, definitely needle felt onto this. You could definitely needle felt onto the earth mat, but that would be way too wasteful, so don't do that. But if you've got an old jumper, you can needle felt on there. Anything that sort of takes the needle, things that don't break it. Linen is absolutely fine. Um, and, and I'm sure there are more things, I just can't think of it at the moment. So for this purpose here today, I'm going to use the blue. Let's use some blue. And I'm I'm cutting um, a piece, a random piece. Um, so it's not a particular size at the moment. I'm just, I know that these are 30 centimeters wide. So it's it's not quite, it's, it's a piece like that that I'm using. So it's a little bit bigger than A4. <clears throat> And I'm going to put the others away, out of the way. Um, in terms of tools, what you will need, um, you can do all of this with a single needle, of course. But you can speed things up by using um, multi-tools, such as the three needle felting tool, um, this version or the clover one, either of those we do sell. You can use your seven needle felting tool, but you will have to either, it does just about work on the um, earth mat. It does work, it works much better on the brush mat. So if you use these two together, that's why we um, sell them often together. Um, and you can also use it quite comfortably on our new eco wool mat. Um, so the seven needle felting tool works with this really well. I don't use it all the time because it makes things really flat and what I like about um, these landscape pictures is that they're actually almost you can use the um I can't see it so well um, have I got a picture here I can show it better to you you can use some of the 3Dness in the pictures so like for example the sheep if you look at them sort of um, sideways you can see that they're slightly bulging out and you can make you can use that um, fact that you can have them coming out at you um, and, and add some 3Dness into it. So you don't have to go big, you can go tiny. In fact, one year just before Christmas, I made loads of these miniature um, cool landscape uh, pictures that was the only thing that I managed in terms of Christmas presents for my family and I stuck it on a card and um, and hopefully they kept it as little pictures but um, that so you can make them into um, these, these look tiny but they look really really effective on a card if you um, if you want to make a, a handmade card and at the same time give a little gift to whoever you're giving the card to so that's really easy to do so you don't have to go big so if you're going big, and I'm making this up um, as I'm going along because I'm asking you to do exactly the same unless you have a picture to follow. So you've got your um, you've got your picture here, and um, 
I'm just going to randomly draw on there now. So I'm I'm, I'm starting at the back, and, and you don't have to do this on your on your uh, wool mat. That was it's probably best if you just have it on a nice firm background. So I'm starting here with my hills. Um, I'm gonna have one really tall hill there. There we go. And then um, that's my furthest hill in the background. And then I'm having one that's got two humps like that. There, that's my second hill. And then in the foreground, I will have um, sort of maybe something that goes a little bit like that. And I don't know, maybe have something that goes like that. So I've got hill number one, hill number two, something in the middle, and then a little hump here at the front. And then of course, I've got my sky here at the background. Now I've made this up entirely. This is, I've not planned this at all. I'm just gonna see what happens. And hopefully you can do the same. Now, even if you're not doing this today, remember this uh, video stays on, um, on YouTube. So you can watch this anytime after. And maybe you're just getting inspiration now. And maybe then you have to, got to go away and get all your stuff. Let's talk about stuff, what you, else you need. So I have got a whole collection here. This is, this is the moment where you can get all your little scrappy bits of wool out and put them, I've put them all in a color coordinated box because I know this is what I'm going to start with, all of this here, the blues and the, and the whites and, um, for the, for the sky. And then I'm, I'm going to need all these greens for my hills and, um, maybe a little bit of brown if I, if I make the hills brown. And, uh, so I've got my browns here at the ready as well. I've, uh, um, scraped all kinds of bits of wool together. I, I go through these, what they are, um, as I'm using them. And then for the finishing touches, I've got all my my pinks and um, and uh, reds here, and um, um, and some some mixed wools that are great for adding detail into it. I've got lots of curls here. You can have some um, non-animal fibers as well, which I have got here. I've got some rami there as adds a luster and a shine to your pictures you can have um all kinds of other things that um like you could mix angelina fiber into it or sparkly stuff um there's all kinds of scope what we're going to do today we're just going to create the base of the picture so we're basically creating the background now you can also wet felt that background that's maybe something else i should mention is that um, you don't have to use um, a felt sheet if you are into both wet felting and needle felting then you might um, have a ready-made uh, needle felted background um, to hand that you can use and that's absolutely fine too in terms of the felting mat, I just happen to have our A4 felting um, mat here, the Earth set, which I absolutely love. I cleaned it earlier with um, with our um, very efficient rubber um, brush. And believe it or not, but this is the first time ever that I have used the back of our Earth mat. And the reason being, and I, I didn't even have that genius idea myself, it was uh, pointed out um, um, through a very uh, talented lady called Danny Ives. She is on Instagram and um, um, she does landscape pictures and we sent her a set of our um, earth mat because we wanted her to try it and see what she thought. And she said she didn't like using the soft side for her landscape or for her pictures, portraits. She does all kinds of things. She used the back of it. And so I thought, oh, let's give that a try. And it does actually work. So if you're doing a 2D um, picture or 2D projects, then do use the back, which um, has just increased the value of our earth mud altogether. Um, I will show you what happens if you're using a, a coarse needle on the back. It it basically bounces off, so it doesn't work very well if you if you're sort of stabbing directly into it. But if you are using a medium needle, which is um, a good needle to start with when you are um, doing um, 2D landscape. Um, once, then that works really well. You can stab into your um, felt and into the um, mat as well because there has to be some sort of sinkage, is that a word? Sinking going on. So let's start with the sky. If you're using a flat color, like say for example that light blue, it is fine, but mixing colors works really well. It also works well if you only have got bits of wool. So you can, this is our um, light blue New Zealand Merino. This one is the Australian Merino. Um, uh, oh, what's it called again? 
water blue, water blue, that's it. Nearly, I nearly called it water green because it has a slight green tinge to it. This one is a very similar color. That's the mountain sheep um, aqua. <clears throat> now you may ask why are you using wool bats? The reason why I'm using wool bats is because if you think of um, your um, applying the wool like like this, it's it's almost as if you're stabbing a brush rather than painting, and um, um, and I really like that that look. I like that sort of more brush stub look than the painted look when you are um, putting long strands of, say, tops on there. I'm just going to show you the difference. I happen to have some tops here. They're not the right, quite the right color, but it it um, you can see the difference. So if you are adding tops to it, you're covering quite a long area and it gives a different look and it is not wrong at all. It's just different. So you can use that too if you've got tops and even if a bit uh, <clears throat> shines out from underneath, that's absolutely fine. It is, um, it's not wrong. I just Personally, I just prefer using the wool bats because um, for me, there's more texture going on and more more things happening. As soon as you use a slightly darker blue, like this is the medium blue that we have got, um, it will make the sky quite moody and, and dark. So you could mix that. I love mixing this with um, the Cape Merino white. Um, at the moment, you're just literally coloring the sky in. And if you're mixing wool, <clears throat> then you lay them on top of each other and you tear them apart and repeat the process until you've got a, a new mix that you um, think is, is just right to apply. And this is how I'm laying the wool out. Keep it really thin, stab it in straight with your needle, so in and out in a straight line. And um, if you remember to lift off your picture because you are felting it onto your mat, ever so slightly, but more and more as you go along. You can add some, um, quite some dramatic colors into the sky. So you, um, if any of you have recently witnessed amazing um, sunrises or sunsets, then you know that the, <laughs> I wanna say the sky is your limit, but it's not even a limit. You can add a little bit of purple or pink into it. I'm using for this right now, I'm using the fairy mix, which um, has got all kinds of colors going on. And again, you're just adding a mood into the sky. Um, having used the light blue background allows me to use the wool even more sparingly because I don't have to um, worry if a little bit of blue uh, color comes through, then that's perfect. If you want to add a little bit of green, almost sort of like a turquoise, I think it's the wrong, it's the wrong setting here. But if you're a needle felting, say for example, the seaside or something like that, then you can add a little bit of turquoise into your, um, into your sky as well. Um, so that that's absolutely fine. Again, this it's the same thing. Just mix your wool. If you're making a very heavy mood um, landscape, then maybe your sky is grey instead of um, turquoise and blue. So you can use also um, grey um, wool and um, especially if you're making sort of a um, maybe more of a um, British winter scene, then the grey will be perfect in there as well. But you're in charge of the weather because you can make whatever you like. So I'm just um, showing you what that might look like if you added that into it as well. So you could add a little bit of gray into, into your sky. I'm not suggesting you should do all of it as I have been doing here, but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to stick to a theme and just cover bits over that I need to cover over. Just to illustrate um, to you what the seven needle um, does, seven needle tool does with a brush mat, you, you basically lay the part onto the brush mat. We do, have, we do sell them in larger sizes as well, so they don't need to be that small. You just stab it in and the wool gets pushed through um, seven times faster. You can see where I've stopped before and where I've stopped with the seven needle felting tool, the wool gets pushed through very quickly, but it also makes it really flat. So when you add details later, that's probably not the tool you want to use um, in that case, because you, um, what I, like I said, what I love is just making use of this, um, 
making use of the um, 3Dness of the world that enhances the depth and the uh, pictures. You do not have to plan your clouds. You do not have to plan anything when it comes to the sky. Just put it on there and get it covered and see what the clouds are making up for themselves. And this is the whole theme of creating your own landscape picture is that a lot of the stuff that you see going on in the pictures that I have needle felted are utterly unplanned. They're just, they just happen. They happen because your eyes see one thing and your brain makes sense of it in another way. So if you, I give you a very, very um, simple example. Um, if you look at the sheep, if you really look at the sheep, all they are is a white blob and a, in this case, a black blob, actually. But if you look at them in the big picture, you look away and then you look again, you can see them as sheep. If you um, look at the details of the mountain, it's just random stuff going on here. I've not planned this. This has just been put there. But if you look away and then look at it again, you're suddenly your brain makes out um, different colors here on the hillside. It makes out a stream. So a lot of the stuff, there's some little boulders there. If you look very closely, um, a lot of this stuff is, 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 is just created because you're your brain makes sense of it and tries, it's almost like it's rummaging around and look at this turbulent sky, whatever's going on in there. Um, it's quite, um, it's, it's quite turbulent, isn't it? So you can, you can design your landscape picture, but actually the design also happens accidentally. Unless you're following a particular um, landscape, then of course you will probably copy some of the colors and some of the things that are going on in there and um, and hopefully you will capture them the way that you want them to be captured. So I'm mixing wool still to um, color in the sky. Um, this is the one of my favorite colors. It's not my favorite. I would never, I wouldn't wear it, but one of my favorite colors to use in landscape pictures is the, um, it's the natural orange, which is the one that's dyed with madder. And I think if you start walking around the countryside and you start, you really start looking at things, not just looking at them. Oh, that's, that's a tree. Oh, that's a shrub. Oh, that's a fern. Look at them and just really give, set yourself the challenge and see how many different colors you can spot. And and the reason why I love this um, this natural orange so much is because it's one of the most it's one of the um, colors that seem to be occurring naturally everywhere I look. Um, so it's it's this color here. Um, Sophie always calls it old lady orange. I don't really know why. I, I don't know any old ladies that wear this orange, but um, this is this is um, one of my favorite colors, and it looks. I think it looks really nice mixed in, or I used. I have used it a lot for um, the coloring in of the poppies in the uh, poppy landscape um, picture. If you look here, because it that is the sort of the natural orange here, and even if you just do the individual poppy make it red and then plonk a little bit of that orange in there and it looks like the shiny part of of the poppy with the sun shining on it so a lot of the colors we have to train our eyes if you walk through nature and if you look at things train your eyes to see them to see the colors and not just assume that a tree is brown and green it's not there are lots of colors going on there and um and therefore it's great to be able to put all these into your picture as well so don't be shy to just try it um some of it of course you have to sort of plan like we're doing it now by laying out the land the land um the lay of the land but a lot of it literally it happens more co coincidentally than anything if you um leave or if you add a little bit of white into the sky, um, sometimes that can actually, it doesn't necessarily need to look like a cloud. It can also look like the um, there's sort of a bit of the, the, um, the sun highlighting that particular area. So um, you can also use a three needle felting tool, as I said earlier, that works quite well just to speed things up as well. Um, remember to lift off your um, picture from your mat so you don't have it forever attached to it. That would be a shame. And and then the biggest thing that I can, can't can stress enough, and this, this is, I, I say it and people humor me about it, but 
Look away from your picture, get your phone or your camera out and take a photo of, of it in progress. And you see different things than your eyes see because what you see then is um, you see the big picture. And that is basically what you're, it's almost like the sense making of your brain that's happening. So this is the sky at the moment. Um, if things shoot over the edge, I personally really like that because I like it that the picture is not just contained on the on the felt piece, but some people might find that not so good. So you can, of course, stay within your um, little fabric piece. It doesn't have to be a square. It could be round. It could just be a torn off piece of fabric. And it's almost like you've torn off um, a bit of the landscape from from uh, nature and um, and you're working with it. So I'm going to finish off my sky, um, but before I do that, I just have a little look. And I would say that uh, we're probably closing the competition today. Alicia should have mentioned that sooner. Is by the time I I um, I finish with the background, which is what we're doing today. We're doing the whole of the background, um, unless we we I'm 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 being a little bit slow, and then I tell you. Let's or let's just say when when I get to that little hump here at the front, that's when we're closing the competition, then we should have enough time. Let's have a look. Um, oh, there's probably going to tell me so many places, your favourite place in the world. Yes, there's lots and lots of um, things being said. So I'm just going to have a very, very... Oh, okay. I'm glad you said uh, you uh, rectified that uh, vampire venom. That's 32 mini felted cuts. That's not real cuts, but that's still 32 <laughs> mini felted cuts. That's quite amazing. Well, you're also one of the only people I know who's got 32 mini felted cuts. Um, Patricia says um, sh she's making Nostratatu. He's headless at the moment. <laughs> Well, if you're all working on something else, fair enough. Um, so basically, apparently, Vampire Venom is needle felting all the cuts in the world. Wow. It's hailing outside, says Uta, so it's nice watching you inside. Oh, I hope so. Let's keep our pictures nice and sunny. Um, right, let's have a look. Um, uh Sandra says, Kenya loves seeing the lions, cheetahs, leopards, elephants, etc. in their na natural environment. I, I have not ever been to Kenya, so that sounds amazing. Um, Karen says, Cornwall. Um, Cornwall. Okay. Um, Diane is there. Hello from Virginia, USA. We've got somebody else from across the big pond. Oh, I'd love to learn about making a needle felted landscape. Well, you're in the right place. So welcome, Diane. I think you must be Diane number four. Um, who's here today remember to give us the thumbs up we want to see um, as many thumbs as we've got viewers at the moment which is at, at a shocking 77 I think that's the most viewers we've ever had on a live stream so I'm now I'm starting to feel really nervous my favorite place says Natasha watching the sunrise on the Indian Ocean from a beach hut in Madagascar also my bed oh <laughs> nice that sounds amazing I would love to go back to Crete. It was my first holiday with my now husband. Oh, that sounds amazing. I do I do love Crete. Um, my grandfather was a very, very... Um, I think he was, it was his second home. He spent lots of time, time there. Many places to choose from, but I think my favourite is Key West, USA for the brown pelicans, says SR. Um, so, oh gosh, okay, so... Um, Okay, I'm not I'm not reading any of the ones I come for around. So that's um that might be a lot. Um oh yes, Prague is nice. I like Prague, Kim. So I'm with you on that one. Um Diana says, um I'm living in my favorite place. Luckily lucky lucky me, the Isle of Mull is is especially beautiful, either most friendly people ever. Also, maybe she means that's amazing. Isle of Mile. I've never been. I have read. Um, wasn't it the Isle of Mile where Morak? Um, the book, the children's book, Morak. Is she on the Isle of Mile? I need to know this now. I'm pretty certain she is. I've been. It's, it's in Scotland, right? Is it in Scotland? Please tell me it's in Scotland, and I'm not com completely going crazy. Um. So, what else have we got? Oh, rural areas of Scotland. That's Donna. Well, you live in your fav favorite place as well, then. Um, Diane says, my favorite place, Galloway Forest. It's simply magical and I find peace there. Um, ooh, 
Joe says, my favorite place is Gudugan in Turkey, as it's a beautiful horseshoe bay. Sounds amazing. I, I want to be back in Turkey as well. My favorite place is New Zealand. I was just there before lockdown last year. So many amazing landscapes. I would love to felt. Well, lots of people say that about New Zealand. Personally, I haven't been, but I know that people fall in love with it and just want to be there all the time. Okay, there's definitely a word I can't um, pronounce. So I do apologize if you don't get a mention, but there's also lots I can't mention because we're here to make a landscape um, picture, not for me to get uh, lots of pleasure out of reading lots of comments. Right, let's go back. Overview camera. Finishing off the sky. It's quite, I think it's quite a happy sky and very varied. It's definitely got lots of colors in it. I actually want to put more of this, um, more of the red into it, I think, because I've seen so many amazing purple, red, orange skies um, recently. Um, in the place where I live, which is in Gloucestershire, but it's um, it's a wonderful place, um, and it's called the Wilderness, and it's it really is beautiful um, place to live. So we get we see the sun su sunshine rising in the morning over the River Severn, and we see the sun going down in the evening over the forest um, of Dean. So we get we get the best of both as well. I'm mixing a bit of um, pink here, bright pink. I don't know what's getting into me. I think it's all these exotic places that I'm wanting to put exotic colors in my sky now. Your color, your sky can be just blue, white. Um, it doesn't have to have all these exo exotic colors in there. I'm just, I'm just going a little bit off overboard. Maybe I'm encouraging you to um, get, just go a little bit wild. Just let, let it all hang out. Go for it. It's gonna be amazing. And the best thing is that if you don't like it, you can always pull it off or put something else over it. So let's just let's just be free and um, have a little play. So I've I've filled my sky now with lots of lovely colours. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to fill in the hills. <clears throat> Now you can fill in the hills in a dark in a darker color. For example, as I, I've done it here with the poppy landscape, it sort of gives them it looks as, as though the sun is is coming from behind and the shadow they're in the shadow at the front. Um some hills obviously are dark in the like the Black Mountains, not very far from us. They always look dark. They, I'll never see a green thing on them. But some hills are green. So you you decide what you want to how you want your hills to appear. The rule of thumb is that um, have things darker in the background and lighter in the foreground. So if you're going to use green, then what I would say is mix a little bit of brown into it already because you do often see sort of brown patches. Now, I love this uh, Portuguese Merino. It's a great uh, wool to um, use for landscape pictures. I've got a I've got the um, milk sheep here, which is also it's it's a slightly grayer brown than this is a little bit um, a little bit more chocolatey that uh, Portuguese merino. I've also got the mountain sheep here. I've got Russian caracal and um, and caracal merino um, here as well. So that you've got all these different browns that you can use. These are probably best found in our mixed packs, such as the cappuccino or the mocha pack. So you get quite a lot of these colors there. And um, then, of course, you can mix this in with... Um, with greens. Now this is a green we don't use very often. It's like an olive green and that's an Australian merino and that's olive. But we have got lots and lots of um, more vibrant greens as well, starting with the pale green. That's probably our lightest green. That's a New Zealand merino. Um, the lichen green is a mountain sheep. It's quite, well, it looks like lichen actually. Our neon green, that's a New Zealand merino. Love this one. We've got a pea green which is also a New Zealand Merino. We have got the rainbow drops. That is exactly like the pea green, but if you look very closely, you can see tiny little colorful um, dots in there. Oh gosh, you can also see my hands. I've been in the war zone, cut a bit of my thumb out um, this weekend <laughs> with a brand new sharp knife. Um, then we've got our variegated green that has got a, a black fiber running through, but it's great because you don't need to mix that. That's just ready to use. And our forest green, which is a, a sort of a really lovely darker green, works really well for Christmas and Christmas trees and things like that. So you've got all your greens here to choose from. And I'm starting to um, make myself a very messy 
a very messy affair here. So start with some of the darker greens and maybe add a little bit of brown into it. Again, I'm making this up completely. I am not planning this in the slightest, but I'm making myself sort of a green, a brown green mix. And as I'm mixing it, I feel it needs to be a little bit lighter than that. I don't want the hills to be too dark, but also not too light. So let's just see how that how that works. And again, I'm mi not mixing it too much because I want some of the colors to be more lumpy. Um, it's not, probably not the best way to put it. More, um, I don't know, I don't want it to be so flat. So I like it that the colors are really, really um, mottled and not so mixed up. If you've over overspilled with your sky into the hill, this is your opportunity to straighten the line by putting your um, the hill top nice and crisp next to the sky. So you can make a nice crisp line now, stabbing it into your um, into your felt. Add the colors into it. At this point, you can cut curls into um, you can. Um, Mix curls into it. Don't cut. Don't cut curls into it. Mix curls into it. Um, that's absolutely fine. You can color the hill in 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 little patches. They don't need. It doesn't need to be exactly the same color everywhere. So you can make another mix of wool up. Um, it's good to plan which colors you want to have more in the foreground so that um, that you can you mix the right colors so at the moment I'm I'm not touching well I'm I'm definitely mixing in the darker greens whatever I'm mixing but I'm not going to use them later on so you can make slightly lighter patches in the hill because you just imagine that part of it might have some trees growing on it, part might be really bare, part might be um, um, a meadow, part of it might be rocky and stony, part of it might have a path going along it, so you can make a little um, whirly path going um, across it as well. Again, if you're going, if you're spilling out underneath what you're felting, that's fine. Um, so the hill below, if you're spilling into that, that's fine. But make sure that the top what that um of anything that's above it is 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 sort of in a neat has a neat edge like a crisp edge because that that's sort of crisp against the uh the back the background which is obviously the sky here in this case right now so i'm going to um you can add a little bit of blue into there as well if you if you or you could just leave a little bit of blue like a collection of water here in the hillside um that that's entirely up to you. Just have a little play and put it on, and then look away, and then look again, and then um, and then um, if if you can't, if it has, if your view hasn't changed, if you're still just honing into the details, then um, it's really really good to just take a picture of it and look at it again because you will see suddenly things emerge that you didn't see um before, and you it will also give you ideas of what you might want to put into certain places. So that's um that's just a little tip, and I'm gonna leave a little bit of um blue here exposed, almost like that could be the beginning of a like a lake in the hillside, potentially with maybe there's a waterfall even running down there. Can you see how, and it goes underwater, underground and comes out um, in, in the lake. It's, it is so totally open what you're doing here. And like I say, this couldn't have been planned, which is why it's no point drawing on your felt what you want there to be in terms of details, because you're only going to cover it up with wool. And um, you want it to be a natural um, emerging project rather than making it um i don't know i mean it can be very very stylized and very planned and organized there's nothing wrong with that whatsoever that is then your design and your individual um, preference but i'm trying to sort of really free you up just go for it um i don't know if um um, if you've heard me tell this story before, but before I um, got into needle felting landscapes, I was actually really worried about doing them. Really worried, like this was one of the. Oh, I'm never going to be good at that. And um, because I'm not a painter, I don't. I don't go out and paint beautiful landscapes. I have real problems seeing perspectives and um, translating three Dness onto 2d it's it's just one of those things that i don't can't do very well i don't have the the brain brain for it I've, I've got to work really hard on that but i i actually 
I got the confidence by just reading up lots and lots on how to paint picture with, with obviously with like water colors or oil or that sort of stuff. And, and I thought, actually, do you know what? This is not, this is not so hard to do this with wool. Quite the opposite. It's so much easier with wool because a lot of this stuff, the wool does automatically. You don't even have to think about it. And then I just started and I, and I, I was so surprised at myself that it's possible to do it. So if I can do it, you can do it. Just give it a go and give it a try. Don't overthink it. Just put the wool on there and to have a little play. There are some rules that you've got to adhere to. Um, for example, you don't put a ginormous hill in the background and a tiny one in the foreground. It's just simple rules, but we'll talk about them when we add to details. And um, if you're if you're just coloring in the background, like I am doing it at the moment, it doesn't have to have as many hills. It could just have um, two very basic parts like for example this um, here has literally got just um, a little hill here and a little hill there it doesn't have to be hills it can just be stripes so um, just have a little play and be just be really um, yeah be just free just be free it's all good right so um, needle felting this hill down I'm going to move on to the next hill now so I want this to be probably a slightly different color because it is a little bit closer <clears throat> but also it just helps to distinguish between the two mixing wool is the so good to mix wool and even here what I will do now is I'm going to use a little bit of the dragon mix because the dragon mix is magical it is magical in that you get it in these amazing colors but it's also magical because I can see heather in there I can see I mean even if you colored in a whole hillside just in that color it would be amazing so I'm using bits of that already in my in my mix I'm going to mix that in I'm making that a really colorful hill um, and if you live in a beautiful um, landscape you will you will probably know um, so I, I, I think um, if you live in a really beautiful place you know already what color your um, your landscape is you might see more red you might see more golden or, or green or brown or you you live in that place you know what are the predominant colors so um, somebody's asked how to transfer a picture onto um, a felt or your 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 fabric that you're prepping to to keep going. I can only assume that maybe you didn't hear it at the very beginning. But I think the first thing is that you have to dissect your picture, take off everything that is um, basically sort of a detail at the top. So, for example, if you have got um, let's use the poppy landscape again. So the poppy landscape. All I can, if this is your uh, picture, you take the house off. Imagine the house doesn't exist, and you just look at the at the lines in the land, um, in the land basically. The lines in the land here is there's two distinct hills. There's a line here that's sort of the backdrop, and you find this in your picture too. But you may have to take out the house, the tree, the narrow boat, the whatever I mean not literally take it out just imagine it to be away and then you can see the lines um, that the the landscape forms naturally and that's what you're only concentrating on that's what we're concentrating on today all the details later on you can add and I will give you lots and lots of help to ha how to add details even like structural details like the house because that you can use that with the, you can um, do that with the help of water soluble paper you don't have to do that freehand even. Right, filling my hill in, um, using the Dragon Mix, which is this amazing wool that just adds lots of um, color and, um, and um, I don't know, just whatever, put it in and see what, what you can spot once you've put it in. Um, but I will also, I won't just put this in on its own. I will put something else in there that, that sort of um, might indicate there is um, maybe a little bit of bare stone going on. So I'm going to use some grey. Um, this is the Gotland grey, by the way. Uh, I'm going to use some, um, this one here is the... Um, uh, South German Merino, I always get it muddled up. Well, I don't get it muddled up really, but it looks very similar to the um, the country sheep. This is slight, this, we call this a brown gray and this is a gray brown, gray brown. So I'm gonna use these three and mix this in with green as well. 
um, maybe it's slightly darker green. Like I say, this is the, I am really, really not um, particularly planning this. So I'm just adding this in here, so to break up the hillside a little bit and not just have it really colorful and green as much as I would love it. Um, I'm putting these extra bits in there, maybe even a tiny, you can even use a little bit of um, black, use the natural black rather than the dyed black. The natural black has a little bit of gray running through it. So I'm mixing this with um, the Gotland gray, just putting that in here and see what happens. And a little bit here. You can um, put a quite a sort of a distinct line between the two hills. So you could even um, put something in there that makes it like a darker line. At the moment, it just appears darker because I'm stabbing uh, almost a groove into it. So that I'm making sure that this hill is in front of that hill. There's no doubt about it. And um, just adding, sometimes if you put things like this in, it could also appear like a quarry in the hillside. Um, so it could be a lighter color. It could be almost like a Cotswold stone color. Um, I'm just digging through my colors here that I've got because there are a lot of the variegated color. Even some of the um, dragon mix could be um, used and just add that in there so it could look like a bare stone wall but it could also look more like um i don't know that there, there are uh, certain flowers that can just um collect in a in a patch on a hillside or whatever whatever your eye sees and whatever your brain makes of it so i've at the moment i have got i'm quite happy with this i've got uh, it looks like i've got a light field here on the side with more growth here a little collection of water there with maybe water running down darker areas there um i've got a colorful hill here and um and and on that side as well so now I'm going to the bottom bit. Now that I'm going to keep as green as I possibly can. And I'm going to use the different greens I have got. Now this um, one, the the the, the um, rainbow drops with the colorful spots in it is, is really quite useful because it gives the impression of a flower meadow. So I'm going to use that and I'm making quite a green, um, lovely, wet appearing meadow there like wet only because it's um it's such it's so green so where it's nice and green there must be water and i'm just felting that down and um as i thought we might not get quite i, I do want to stick to the one hour otherwise um um people can't rely on how long our streams are so i'm filling this in right now but i will just give alicia the heads up to go and find a winner for our today's prize which is the um, landscape mix and um she will just randomly pick a name there is no no preferential treatment or no um judgment as to Alicia doesn't think, yeah, that's my favorite place. You win. It is completely a random selection of of um, whoever um, wins. So um, I'm going to use my seven felting needle tool. I'm going to speed my work up. So whilst I'm filling my picture in, I uh, will just tell you that um, this is obviously part one. We're re-watching this on Thursday. So there will be also a winner on Thursday, which is somebody else and will be announced by Hannah. Hannah is uh, usually um, watching the um, Tuesday evening repeats on our Facebook page. Join our Everyone a Maker group on Facebook because we would love to see what you're making. Um anyway but with our with our products and from the live streams especially and um we would also love for you to uh, join us again next week so you can get a reminder if you subscribe to our youtube channel it should give you an option to get notifications so that you don't have to rely on your own alarm clock or whatever you use to remind yourself that we are on and as a little bit of homework if you're crafting along i want you to fill in the remainder of your background on the picture whether that is um green 
fields or brown hills or maybe you're um, putting something else in there entirely. If you're if you're making um, a flower meadow or anything like this, then maybe the details can come later. So just fill in the background. And um, I remember somebody, when we ran our retreat and we did needle felted landscape pictures, did a, a lavender field. And that was amazing. So we've got a winner today, and that is Alison um, G. So Alison G, you've won yourself the landscape mix today on Thursday. It will be somebody else. If you could drop us a line to um, info at the makers with two S's dot co dot UK and just let us know that you have won our today's prize, which is the landscape wool mix, then we will get that posted out to you. We'll ask you for your details and um, we'll post that out to you in no time. So that would be amazing. I'm just adding, you might have noticed me adding a little bit of a darker patch in here. You can do that because it will just give an indication of maybe some, um, maybe there's a, um, a hollow in this part of the, of the um, hillside and the field. So that's basically what I am, um, why I'm doing this. Now, when you do the last bit, if you followed this bit by bit, then um, again, just use different color green so that it's offset from the rest of it. But that is, um, it's almost like a little bit of a homework, um, especially if you've tuned in late, then you you have a chance to catch up as well um, if, you, if you haven't been able to keep up, which is absolutely fine. And that's all we have done today is literally starting to fill in the background. And I, I'm so excited because I can see so many things happening here that I have um, definitely not planned. So um, there you go. That's my picture so far. Um, you can still lighten the mood in it by just going over it later with uh, lighter colors. But um, I'm, yeah, I'm definitely um, liking this so far. It's going to be an exciting um, finished picture. So hopefully you can catch up with it. We have got lots and lots of things that are happening um, still this month. Um, next well, actually, it's this Saturday or we're already in this week. The 10th of April, we're going to have um, a takeover um, on Instagram with Molly Makes. So you will see us all day posting on Molly Makes um, Instagram um, uh, page from 12 until 9, 12 noon until 9 in the evening. On the 11th, I will be on Create and Craft taking the dragon, a new princess um, uh, with me, a yellow uh, princess. She's actually over there. Shall I just grab her quickly? I will do in a minute. But I will also just let you know that we are still um, selling our butterfly packs to make the um, larger than life butterfly, which um, we're doing on the 17th of April at um, 12 p.m., with a creative craft show and you can still buy your pack. It's not so not too late, especially as the um the workshop stays on their site and it's only seven pound ninety nine to get an entry ticket for the whole weekend for 50 different craft projects and um, things that are happening. Right, there's the little princess, um, Aelia. She's going to be featured on Creating Craft on Sunday. She's exclusive to them and she will be there with uh, the magic dragon and the bug in the mug. If you haven't got that yet and you want to watch um, how some of this is made, then do join us on Tuesday. That's at 7.30 a.m., but you can, of course, record it. Um, so don't don't get up for it if, if, you, if you're not an early bird. Um, and other than that, I see you next week on Tuesday or maybe on Thursday, depending when you're watching. And I can't wait to see the progress, work in progress on our Everyone a Maker um, group. So do go and join it. Thank you, everybody, everybody for watching. And um, I love you and leave you now. Bye.